Hello, I'm Paul Stewart, and welcome to Show Us Your Cave. Today's guest is the second time around on our show, Josh Wilbur. He's made some significant changes to his studio. So without further ado, Josh, welcome to your, you're the first two-timer to Show Us Your Cave. Very cool. It's right? a lot better this time around. You have a lot of changes. Yeah, tell us, fill us in. Tell us what's new. This particular year, just because almost all clients have been remote, I was like, you know what? I can actually tear the place apart a little bit as long as it's still functional the whole time, but it'll look a hot mess for a little bit. <laughs> you know, I actually have time to finish all the things I've always wanted to do. So I just pick away at it. And it, I mean, it was, you know, treated inside and outside was all treated. And I was like, yeah, one day I'll put a window in it. It's so much easier if we can see each other if we're talking about pronunciation and mouth and you say it like this. And not having a window is like a real deterrent. But the getting the window in the booth was a big project that I really wanted to do. So and the desk, you've got all your gear now located in one place. Because I remember last time we had racks of different things. So it looks like you've centralized everything. It was on rolling racks because you know I do a lot of traveling and working out of other studios. And I would always bring like racks of gear and actually just a couple of the studios I started working at pretty much have everything I need. So I don't really have to drag as much around as I used to. Mm -hmm. um, so getting it all into the desk as opposed to in separate racks was like a big deal. And another big reason for me changing my desk was for the speakers because I had seen the Genelec uh, woofer stands and I really, really, really wanted to try them out. And my old desk had like the high racks on each side and the speakers set on it. It's not, it's not an option, you know? Well, I'm so glad I'm you like, brought it up because that was my next question to yeah, you. Yeah, I needed to get the desk lower so I could hear the speakers over it. And, uh, you know, and then immediately it's like, all right, let's try these puppies out. Yeah. They're as great as everybody says. <laughs> and they are. <laughs> Yes, do tell. Tell us about how, how they've been working for you. Um, it's great. Once we get the, uh, the, the GLM software and uh, tone the whole thing out and, uh, you know, the, the low end in my room is like razor flat. I mean, it's so cool. Like I've never had, this is actually a pretty controlled, well-built studio where you can hear the, the, the low end pretty well, but it's like perfect right now. No weird bumps, no weird anything. In fact, Pretty much I dialed the low end in on, on the mix that I was trying these out on like right away and haven't touched it since, you know, like I've made mixed tweaks, but I haven't changed the low end pretty much since day one. I, we were talking earlier off camera and you mentioned about the idea of like, you know, when you have a uh, mix that's, you know, you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> no, so I just, I just sent the mix off to the band. Call it a no hitter. No, um, <laughs> you pitch a no hitter. <laughs> and then send the mix off to the band and they have zero comments yeah but i pitched the no hitter yet uh yesterday and i was pretty stoked on it oh that is awesome to hear yeah i mean those things have been incredibly versatile um uh you know i have them in this room here and i've been just blown away at at the holes that it can fill in you know where we had problems before and just taking care of things and so smooth where the most important part is that transition up to the speaker and just seeing that to be completely as level as you could ever get I right. certainly didn't notice it at all. You know, like it just sounds like one speaker set to me. It's it's interesting. I had a, another producer buddy um, asked to come in and listen uh, a couple days ago. And uh, we made arrangements to make that possible. And he came in and checked it out. And he said the same thing I did. He's like, it sounds like a mastering studio in here. And I was like, it does. It really does. <laughs> Very cool, man. I tell you, the room looks great. And um, I'm happy to see those... Uh, those woofer stands in place it looks, I mean, the whole central command station there. And, you know, you were mentioning, um, you know, from before, uh, you've been working in your own environment for how long now? Maybe four years. I might've been in this studio for four years. Um, and I've built more or less the same studio definitely twice now, like pretty much the same kind of layout footprint. So I knew what things I wanted when I was building the second one, like this, this, this has pretty high ceilings in here. Oh yeah. And you, uh, I know you turned the lights up bright for us, but you obviously have control of your lighting. I mean, is it even a studio nowadays if it's not got pimped out with the LEDs that cost $8, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> it's crazy how that you gotta do that the LEDs. Yeah. Hey, I want to ask you one other question because I think, you know, a lot of people have home studios or building out like, oh, I can have my, my plan or whatever. But 
when you're working as a professional, at what point in your career did you realize that, hey, I need to be working from my own studio and realizing that it was going to be a thing for you um, that was going to be really important? It's tough to be a commercial recording studio right now. Um, there's massive advantages to working in one. Um, but the reality is most clientele go to producers and wherever they happen to be working. So if my clients want to work with me, we probably work mostly in my studio. Um, it's not a commercial facility. It's my studio, you know, but it's just tough. Like I think uh, the commercial recording studios and, you know, their overhead is crazy because it was like their speaker monitoring situation is like really dialed in, you know, and I guess that was like the big thing for me working here is like, as long as I have the monitoring, that's like, right down the lane and perfect, then I can do everything I need to mix wise in here. My room is well tuned. And now, I mean, yeah, Josh, you've got a main monitor system in your little control room there, you know, that's actually the best way to describe it. Like, um, again, I was just talking to another producer friend of mine, different guy. And he was like, how are you liking those gentle X? And I was like, you know, when you go to a large format recording studio and they have like the super, like the ones that have a killer set of mains up in the wall and the soffits, some stuff you would never build in your home studio. Now my room sounds like, like I have a set of mains up in the soffits, you know, it's like, I don't know if soffits is the right word, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I finally feel like I have, I feel like I'm in a large format recording studio with a serious set of mains. Yeah. Well, I think you do. And man, if you get to a third time, third is a charm on our show. Would love to follow up and see how things are going for you at that point with those speakers. No, I'm done. I don't <laughs> want to do any more of this place. I'm good. <laughs> I'm put in the work. Um, uh, well, Josh, I know you've got some work to get to, so we don't want to hold you up. I really appreciate you coming on here and uh, enjoying uh, talking to you again. Thanks for having me.